Me. Okay. Uh, maybe I will speak a little louder. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. It's audible, sir. Okay. So those who are unable to hear me, I recommend you to have some headphones or headsets. Okay. Uh, you you sound like you have a cold, sir. <laughs> uh yeah uh, see here yeah. <laughs> uh i was not well but it's okay let me i'll just see yeah uh, i'll just try to increase my voice okay uh okay leaving that apart we'll just wait for a couple of minutes uh, let the other also join the session and today uh, we will be discussing and as well as solving different types of tests that are uh, discussed in the lectures okay how do you do a hypothesis testing and where do we do a particular test any any prior questions before we sir i have yeah. one uh, basically i am able to solve questions no worries with that but when it comes to calculating the power that is 1 minus beta means i don't get how to calculate it. so if you can show one example for that okay okay we'll see sir hmm so for me uh, sometimes uh, in some of the questions they are taking uh, t to be uh, the test statistic to be binomial uh, uh, mean comma variance and in some other things they are taking it as bernoulli p so i am just getting confused as to when we should uh, take t as uh, binomial and uh, uh, when we should take it as bernoulli because mm. as it is in in uh, in the pa uh, questions of 11 week 11 mm. there there are two questions wherein i was uh, like assuming without seeing the solutions i was working it out so i was assuming it as uh, binomial in which they have taken it as bernoulli and uh, the other question they have taken it as uh, binomial so okay can you please point confused. out uh, those two particular questions i can give you the numbers sir. yeah let's give me uh, one is should i post the number in the chat box yeah yeah that would be better mm -hmm. yeah, okay so we will see we will maybe we will encounter uh, while we do while we go through the contents okay uh, as well as you just post it in the chat box yeah. so that i will sure. have a reference okay okay uh, then let's start uh, today's discussion i hope my screen is visible and i hope i am audible clearly yes sir yes okay okay so in week 11 uh, we stopped at uh, at a point where we just saw one type of test which is z test right we quickly recall i am not going to solve a problem but we will just quickly recall uh, uh, the last parts of week 11 so in that we discussed this z test so z test or z test you can call however way you want uh, this z test so for this when when do i use z test for what situation so that is the primary understanding you should need so you you should have a situation with you you might be having uh, one situation with you and that situation should more or less uh, uh, it, it should be reasonably uh, good to use z test so there are few conditions where i can use z test so this is a situation and there will be inside that situation there will be some conditions for which 
if if those conditions are not satisfied i can't use z test the first and foremost condition is z test i can only use to compare or when it is testing for means right testing for mean so for any distribution if you are interested to test for mean this z test might be one of the test you can use the next thing is this is the main condition your variance of distribution should be known right this is an assumption condition or assumption we take uh, need to be there in our situation so if these conditions and uh, uh, assumptions are there in our situation then you can use z test right what if in real life situations uh, i think many of you know this if you don't know about the population you will not know about the variance also variance of the population or distribution so in most of the cases most of the real cases real life cases variance is also not known okay so then what should i do so i want to test for a mean test for the population mean based on the samples i have but for using z test i need this assumption that i should know at least the variance of the distribution if this is not known i cannot perform z test then what test should i use for testing the mean so there comes uh, this t test which is called students test okay so this is some cheaper version of z test so once you don't know uh, the variance of the population we do something in order to replace that variance of the distribution and we perform more or less we perform the same thing what we did for z test it, it's just like a cheaper version of z test okay what do so we that do that is also used to test the mean yes sir this is also used to test the mean so this 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 t test got erased because of the second condition got oh, failed okay. in our right. situation sometimes in our real life situation you will be in a situation where you don't know anything about your distribution only the samples are given to us so some samples you you will draw from the distribution which are iids of the distribution and we don't know the mu and we don't know sigma square also so this is also unknown okay so this is the key difference between z test and t test okay sigma square is not known so here let me talk about uh, what we do here so in order to compute the significance level or beta or any probabilities or any types of errors probabilities of errors what we do basically we will be designing some test we say i will reject the null if my test statistic is greater than some c then in order to compute alpha or just what what i what will i do i will convert this t minus expected value of t divided by square root uh, square root variance of this what do you use right and this will follow normal 0 okay usually t will be as we are testing for mean t will be sample mean so once if i convert it in the, in terms of sample mean this is equivalent to x bar minus so you do this uh, mu divided by sigma by root so this sigma is known to us previously this is known and this is what uh, we are going to test right uh, 
what else yeah so this is mu naught so we will be using mu naught so this is known this is known so we have uh, the distribution in terms of the sample mean and it is converted to the standard normal and we compute the probabilities accordingly but in this case when it uh, when we talk about uh, the probabilities are computing let's say compute the significance level here for that uh, we need to describe our situation right we need to have some situation described so i have the samples with me then i need to have the null and the alternative need to be defined so let me define like mu is equals to mu naught and i'm testing it against mu greater than some mu naught okay so alternate and next what next thing what should i have test the statistic and when i am testing for mean usually my test statistic should actually be connected to what parameter i am testing okay this t is t uh, the distribution of t should closely related to the parameter which i am testing so this as i am testing for mean using the samples the closely related uh, thing that is uh, that is closely related to mu is uh, the sample mean so that is why we will use the sample mean as a test statistic okay once i have the test statistic this 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 and lastly i have to describe the test what i am going to do where i am going to reject and where i am going to accept so test is reject h not if t is greater than some c some critical value c okay so this is our uh, description or the situation and you see that key difference between the previous situation and this situation here the sigma square is unknown okay now i can't do this so for finding alpha so finding alpha so alpha is equals to probability that i am going to reject the null given the null is true so null is true means mu is equals to mu not so this will be probability that t greater than c mu is equals to mu not so that's where i am going to reject that's the rejection region so t greater than c and now you see uh, if i if we try to uh, convert this t to standard uh, normal usual thing what we do is t minus expected value of t by square root of variance of t if i do this i might be getting sigma in the denominator so t is x bar so what will what will we get is uh, something okay maybe i'll write this t minus expected value of t divided by square root of variance of t greater than right side also i have to do the same thing expected value of t divided by variance of t so we all know uh, t is just the sample mean if i just replace it with sample mean x bar minus expectation of the sample mean which will be mu but uh, we are in the case of we are in the world of where mu is equals to mu not so you can simply replace it with mu not divided by square root of variance of t variance of t is sigma square by n so square root of uh, variance of t is sigma by root n greater than uh, the right side will be c minus mu not by sigma by root n so we, we we have done the same thing what we used to do in z test but the only problem here is we don't know this not known okay so here we stop and we we are like uh, at no man's land and we don't know in which direction to, to go so then what we do is we have to figure it, figure out something right we have to figure out something in place of sigma what can i possibly do so the best thing what i can do is i have the samples with me so the so considering the samples any function any function you consider with respect to the samples 
the expectation of that function should more or less closely relate to sigma or what i mean is i need to design a function of the samples such that in the long run or when n is larger and larger so if i take more and more samples i should approach to sigma so this particular function should approach to sigma or in in other words what i mean is if i compute the expectation of this function this should go to sigma in the long run as n increases this should go to zero so do you remember any function of samples the expectation of that function goes to sigma e of s square is equal to right so if i if i consider the sample variance in place of the population variance if i consider the sample variance which is s square is equals to 1 by n minus 1 we have this right ugly expression i minus 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square okay we have the sample variance with us so we all know expectation of s square is equals to sigma square correct okay so now as i don't know it, it looks reasonably well right I, as i don't know the population variance what happens if i just simply replace with sample variance does it make difference yes of course it makes a difference but as far as i have some conditions on n uh, sufficiently large or with a particular small n what what is the difference i can compute right this is an hand hand work done by the students okay so they what they did is when you see the t t t table also so for each n uh, you will be having different different probabilities so those are hand computed uh, manually so it's students computed table okay so that's why uh, the t test is also called a student test so we have automatically generated n for each n uh, we have uh, computed the probabilities for each n we will have different graphs for the t distribution and for no surprise as n tends to infinite t distribution is will tend to z distribution standard normal distribution so that that that, that should work right so as n tends to infinite you are taking like your sample variance will become the population variance and it is uh, more or less equal to the z distribution so for small values of n you might have uh, the difference in the probabilities of t distribution table and uh, z z table as n increases so you think about this for a moment as n takes large and large values okay you have 1000 samples or 1 lakh samples with you or maybe even more 10 power 1 10 power 1 lakh samples with you what do you expect you more or less if you compute the sample variance that will more or less be equal to the actual variance population variance and instead of instead of uh, sample variance here it is much likely to use uh, the population variance itself so what i mean is instead of s you more or less using sigma only there and it will start following the z z table c distribution not standard normal distribution okay so so this this is this, this is a good observation i guess so people who want more clarity on this uh, there is an online website you go uh, to this website statdis.com where you can plot the pdfs of any distribution so you just have to input the parameters and it will give you the pdf graphs and go there open t distribution and start giving values for it so n 10 see what happens when n is 30 n is 50 n is 100 and you will observe slowly uh, 
uh, that this will slowly go and converge to standard normal as n increases it will converge to standard normal. so the okay if you if whatever we discussed uh, if you are not following through just forget or if you don't want just forget that the only key thing we change here is instead of uh, what the difference between the z test and the t test is if the sigma square the population variance is not known we simply replace it with sample variance so that's the key change key difference key difference is uh, since we don't know uh, the population variance we replace sigma square with sample variance which is s square okay so that's the key difference and all other things whatever we did for z uh, z test we do the same thing for t test and uh, yeah once we replace it's no longer uh, follow standard normal it follows t distribution so therefore this x bar minus mu divided by sigma by root and if it is sigma this follows standard normal in place of sigma if i use s x bar minus mu by s by root n so this will follow t distribution and with some n minus 1 subscript which this is called the degrees of freedom so as i previously discussed just now for each n you will have different probabilities so that, therefore the distribution table will uh, change according to the number of samples you choose okay considering 10 samples the probabilities might be different but whereas you consider 100 samples the probability distribution might be different so that's why this t distribution is dependent on n yes sir you said that it will change right mm -hmm. so suppose if our n is uh, let's say 10 mm -hmm. then when i look at the t table where should my n lie it should be 9 or i should look for the 10 value see when n is 10 it is mm -hmm. like 10 minus 1 9 mm -hmm. you should go for uh, uh, the table 9 9 table oh okay or the tables will be like it, it will be given you see n is equals to 10 and the table starts so if it is given like that n is equals to 10 then you are considering 10 samples and you should uh, see uh, corresponding row and corresponding column oh. okay uh, right now okay uh, this this is useful for you in future but right now we will provide you you don't require the tables Okay. Yeah, but it's good uh, to have an understanding how to look for uh, the values from the tables. Okay, yeah. So that's what we are going to do here, and we will compute alpha. Now the alpha will be probability that x bar minus mu naught divided by s by root n is greater than c minus mu naught divided by s by root n given mu is equals to mu naught so once you replace it's there is no need of writing that so this is this and again now i know this follows t n minus 1 so this is 1 minus f so you see there is greater than so i can write 1 minus probability that T n minus 1 less than or equals to C minus mu naught by s by root n. Now this is 1 minus capital F T n minus 1. So this is just a CDF. CDF value at C minus mu naught by s by root n. So this is alpha for us. Okay. Uh, so that is how we compute alpha and we will see it example now but before that uh, so we i will just write it down this is just the cdf 
of t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Yes. Sir, uh, means before proceeding, I was trying to uh, solve for the, the means two-sided test. That is mod of whatever value. Okay. Is there, right? Mm. So I came across like it was like alpha is equal to two times uh, one minus two times fz of whatever value is in there. Mm. So I got the right value, right? You got the? I got the right value for alpha. Alpha is equal to one minus two times fz of ft minus one, tn minus one of uh -huh. the value whatever you wrote. So, ah, okay. So if you do the two-sided test, you mean? Mm -hmm. ah, if you do the two-sided test, so then this will change. It will change. This will change. Right? Mm. Uh, it should be like then for two-sided t minus mu, modulus t minus mu, greater mm. than some c. Mm. Uh, there will be modulus coming into the picture. Yes. And this will be just the C because already I have okay two sides. Mu I have taken in the test yeah, statistics. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So you might be getting something like C naught by S by root n. Yes, sir. I got that. But mm. uh, means my confusion is because yesterday I was solving one question. Mm. I don't remember it exactly. And there also it was a two tail test, but they didn't take this one, one minus. It was it was for greater only. Is whatever t minus mu naught is greater than some c. Okay, so, see, okay. I, I, I got you, I got you. You can write in this manner or you can write it will be two times of, so let me say this, if it is some constant c, or suppose it is hmm. c. Okay, or I can write this as two times f t n minus 1 minus c. This is equivalent to this. Okay, so if my C is negative, then I can write it like that. Ah, see, the thing is, the distribution will be symmetric to y axis. Mm. So when you do the modulo thing, you might be getting minus C plus C. Yes. And you will consider uh, this and this. This is what alpha is for you. Mm -hmm. So alpha will be probability that uh, T is less than minus C. Okay, maybe Tn minus 1 is less than minus C plus probability that Tn minus 1 is greater than minus C. Okay. So now it's it's so a matter of how do, how do you write? Huh? So why minus C in both? Plus it should be one should be C, right? Yeah, yeah. One is plus C. Okay. Hmm. And if you observe correctly, this probability is same as this probability because of the symmetricness. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Ah. Hmm. So this is actually equals to this, but in other words, you see, this probability P is actually 1 minus of Fz of Yes. C. This P Basically, it's the CDF value. Uh, this P is 1 minus of Fz of C. Correct? Hmm, yes. Uh, and also, it is equals to Fz of minus C. That that fz of minus c is just this probability. This probability, this okay. is p, mm -hmm. and as this is p, mm -hmm. this will be this total will be one minus of that p. Okay, that way. So fz one minus fz of c can also be written as like this. Okay, so got it. It's, it's it's how you write. Okay, mm -hmm. you, you write it in terms of c, or you write it in terms of minus c. Both is right. It will alter. Huh. Okay. Okay. But it only happens if the C is a constant value. Means whatever is inside is a constant value. In that will order. be constant, right? You will get some fraction. Mm -hmm. If you are finding for alpha, mm. whatever it uh, lies inside this is given to you. And it yes, it's a given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was something like that. Mm. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So let's come back. Let's do a problem on uh, t test. And it is, let me take the problem of AQ 
12.5 sorry 12.5 we want to give any problem or shall i take any problem so let me take the second one okay so this says x follows normal mu sigma square aq 12.5 question 2 is a t test problem so this says uh, x is following normal mu sigma square and then uh, with unknown sigma so that's where i can use t test so this is unknown and then for n is equals to 36 iid samples of x like i said there are 36 samples that are drawn from this distribution and the observed sample mean is 15.5 so the sample mean is so if i define my test statistic to be x 36 by 36 so this t is given to us which is x bar 15.5 okay this is there and the sample standard deviation is given to us as so s is given to us as t okay what conclusion would a t test reach if the null hypothesis assumes mu is equals to 14 against an alternative hypothesis mu not equals to 14 at a significance level of alpha is equals to 0.05 okay no alpha is given no so we what what i what additional information i have to write i have to write null is given to us as mu is equals to 14 and alternative is given to us as mu not equals to 14 so this is a two tail test Uh, what else? The next thing is, yeah, significance level. What conclusion do we make? What conclusion do we make at the rate alpha is equal to zero point zero five? That's the question we have. And this is the information given to us. So, as sigma square is unknown. you should straight away you should uh, by by seeing this and you are testing for mean you should straight away think that you can use t test for this and while you use t test you should be very careful about the n also so as n is given to be 36 so we are in t35 distribution it follows t35 distribution okay so this is there and we have as we have t because and we have mu not and we have alpha now what should i find basically what conclusion what do we mean by conclusion is there reject the hypothesis uh, reject whether the whether i reject or accept so how do i uh, connect this reject and so what should i do so alpha Alpha is given. Alpha is, Calculate yeah. the type one error. Type one error is given to us, right? Hmm. This is the type one error. So what should I find basically? So remember, in week eleven, I guess I have uh, talked about when do you reject, when do you accept uh, by comparing p value and alpha, and by comparing test statistic or c. We have to define a test here. Hmm. Test is you are going to reject the null if p minus mu modulo is greater than some c. So in order to accept reject, I said you can compare p with c, the test statistic with the critical value, and you can do hmm. the conclusion, or you can compare. p value p value with c with alpha oh. and you can do conclu conclusion i mean 
you can then decide either to reject h not or accept Okay, so bo both things you can do. Let me do the critical value. That is very easy. Okay, so we have this already. We need to find a critical value. Then we can compare these two things, and then decide uh, whether to reject or accept. Okay, so what we do? We use the very known formula we have, which is using the significance level. So significance level alpha is probability that mod t minus mu is greater than c. That's the rejection region for two-tailed test where my null is true. So this is uh, the type one error probability, uh, type one error, and probability of it is the significance level. Now we have the left hand side. We have it is 0.05, and the right hand side. If you see. We have mod t minus mu. I can open that modulus and I can write this t minus mu greater than c plus probability of t minus mu less than minus c. Right? I can write it in two different. Sir, ways. here uh, why can't we use uh, like usual? Usually we do mu in z test, like t minus uh, mu. Ah, you can variance by root n. You can, you can. What you can do is uh, with the modulus. Ah, with the modulus, and ultimately you are going to open the modulus, right? Yeah. So you can do by s by root n. Now this will be mu naught. Okay. So this is the probability. And I know yes, I know n, I know mu naught. Okay, I know everything. So this this except c, I know everything. So let me write down what all I know. So this is left side. I don't need to worry. This follows t n minus one. Here in this case, n is thirty six. So this this follows t thirty five, which is greater than c by. Is it t n minus one? This is modulus t n minus one. So this is greater than what is the s value given? Three divided three by six square root thirty six, which is six. Okay. So this will be probability that mod t thirty five greater than two c. Two c. Now I need to open the mod. Now if I open, I let t thirty five greater than c. To see, or probability that t thirty five less than one. Okay. Now, if you see, we have a symmetric. That's always that 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 should always run in your mind. So this t distribution and z distribution are symmetric around the y-axis. So it can be like this. Okay, so so this alpha is coming from two probabilities. One is this area, which is this, and this is this area, which is this. And if you observe correctly, these two should be equal. And if these two are equal and its sum is zero point five zero point zero five, then both of them should be equals to zero point. Two five zero two five, and this should also be equal to zero point zero two five. Okay. So you can take any one of it, or you go back and see the hint. Then you will know which one to choose. So the hint given here is f inverse. Hint given is. F inverse t thirty five of zero point zero two five is equals to minus two point zero three. 
minus 2.03 okay you see you see here using the hint you have to take the f inverse but for which value you have to take f inverse you have to take f inverse for 0 0.025 so let's suppose say these are the two cases if i have taken the case one so if i have taken this thing 0 0.025 is equals to probability that t35 is greater than 2c and i can write this as 1 minus ft35 of 2c right if i write it like this then if i simplify i'm going to get ft35 2c will be equals to 0 0.975 and if i take the inverse here inverse on both sides f inverse on both sides i will be getting 2c is equals to f inverse t35 of 0 0.975 so which is not given in the hint you see this value we don't know so what we can do is if i follow this way uh, given the hints i cannot solve so that means you shouldn't take this particular case you should take this case so if you consider this now this is 0.025 is equals to this i can write it as fz sorry ft35 of minus 2c so now you can take f inverse on both sides if i take that will be f inverse t35 0 0.025 which is equals to minus 2 times c now this value i know given it is given in the hint is minus 2.03 minus 2 c this and this was cancel and we are going to get c is equals to from 1.015 Are we correct? Those who have solved this, can you let me know? You want the same value? Okay. Ah, now what is this C? This C is basically not T minus mu. So I'm going to reject. Now my test is I'm going to reject h naught if mod t minus mu is greater than 1.015 yes any doubt mm -hmm. yes yes rather hello Okay, now in place of C, what we got is, uh, this is the critical value we got. For alpha is equals to 0 0.05, my critical value should be 1.015. Sir, hmm? uh, no, the previous step, uh, hmm. you had taken uh, F inverse of T35 of 0 0.025 is minus 2C, right? Uh -huh. you, you took the other, si other side because uh, the hint is given as... Uh, uh, Correct. Uh, minus 2.03. Uh, hmm. But even otherwise, F inverse of T35 of 0.975 will also be 2.03, uh, right? Ah, will also negative be two, sign will ah, be there. Yeah, yeah. Will also be 2.03, but that is not given, right? So the, by seeing the hint, um, ah. we should take the uh, negative uh, side of this, is it? Correct. So that's what. Okay. See, if you if you take in the first one, if you know that this from here, if you can uh, write down this one, zero point zero nine seven five is equals to two point zero three. Mm. So if you can write this, then. We can take this also because hmm. it is actually 1 minus 0 0.025. Hmm. But how do you know this f inverse? This, these are f inverses, right? Inverse functions of f distribution. Uh, sorry, okay. t distribution. But usually when it comes as if they are symmetry, symmetrical, this 0 0.025 is same as 1 minus 0 0.025. That is uh, 
oh, oh my god how 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 see t distribution see cdf of t distribution is different right cdf of t distribution will not be symmetric okay okay see t distribution uh, the symmetricness is for pdfs of t distribution okay. those are okay. pdfs tdfs okay. will always be non decreasing right it, it will uh, be like yeah, this. yeah 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 Okay. this won't be symmetric and and this this also it's inverse of cdf it's more uh -huh. complicated okay. so, so maybe in this case it it might have worked out i, I guess i don't know but okay. you can directly take like this okay okay fine okay, okay yeah. so always be careful and it's better to use whatever the hint provided hint is okay uh, fine okay so yeah let's come back and we got the value of c and this c is the critical value at the rate uh, so this is the critical value at the rate alpha is 0.05 okay. so what this told me is if this is mu my t shouldn't go mu minus 1.015 and this is mu plus 1.015 and this is the acceptance region if t lies if t is in between uh, t lies in between this interval then you accept so if this that is what this said reject the null if the difference between t and mu is exceeding 1.015 so the difference will exceed 1.015 only if t goes this side or this side so this is the rejection region so in this case we are going to reject h0 okay now let's see what is t minus mu we already have the test statistic value with us so test statistic value with us 15.5 and we also have mu not with us right so so this is mu not so we will we will compute where my t is lying so this test statistic is given to be 15.5 i'm not wrong 15.5 yes and uh, this mu not is 14 now i have to see whether this t minus mu not is greater than c or not so that's where that's what i wanted to conclude so let me see what is t minus mu not so t minus mu not is 15.5 minus 14 which is 1.5 right and this side i have c which is 1.015 so what is the inequality this so what comes in this box greater or lesser or equal to greater than so this is 1.5 this is 1.015 1.5 is greater than 1.05 1.5 is greater than uh, 1.05 so this tells me mod t minus mu is actually greater than c if it is this we are going to reject the null so that what that's what test says so you reject null if you got the difference between the test statistic value and mu is greater than the critical value so here uh, the difference is actually greater than the critical value you are going to reject the null. okay so this is the conclusion we make okay so that is for testing the mean with unknown population standard deviation so if the population standard deviation is unknown we will use the t test to compute the probabilities or probabilities of type 1 error and if alternative is also simple then we can compute power rules if, if the alternate is not simple then it's highly difficult for us to compute beta 
बिकॉज बीटा डिपेंड्स ऑन अल्टरनेटिव हाउ अल्टरनेटिव इज बीटा यस सर आई ट्राइड टू कंप्यूट द पावर for whatever in the lecture sir sir you straight the similar one that you took so means i was not able to calculate it so can you calculate you will not be able to see alternative is somewhat mu greater than mu right mu not right hmm so when in this case you don't know what value you should take for mu so if you say there is mu 1 mu is happening to be mu 1 in the alternative also then hmm. you can compute beta actually i'm not means i okay, actually okay. what is beta beta it's is the probability of type alternative is true uh okay hmm. probability Except of accepting, uh, null, accepting null given alternative given alternative is true right ha is true. yes ha ah, now tell me what will you do this You accept H not. When do you accept H not? In this particular case, when t minus mu is less than less than less than or equal to c. Uh, Correct. This part, sir, is less than c. Hypothesis uh, because of... yes, sir. See, you reject your test says you reject H not if mod t minus mu is greater than c. Yes. So if you if you, if mod t minus mu is greater than c, then you reject. Then when do you accept? Okay, yes, got it. Huh? And accept and given in the space alternative of alternative is true. Alternative is true. If you take mu greater than mu naught, then there are many possibilities for mu, right? Any value that is greater than mu naught, it there is a possibility. Mm -hmm. okay. And this 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 uh, this is not as static value or any constant it will not act as a constant now it's like any value like right? it's it's random now but in z test uh, uh, for calculating uh, power they used to give the alternate uh, mean right so ha huh. yeah. in z the, test the we give like this, yeah see if, if we have given a alternative like this mu is equals to mu one or something like this Because we are suspecting that it could be like the mean could be this, so ah, yeah. that becomes the alternator. Correct. So then, if that is the case, then you do like this. As then see, now it will be mu is equals to mu one, and you do okay. you do the same thing. Instead of so mu not previously, you take uh, mu one here. Okay. That's it. Means that why that's why I was not able to calculate because mm -hmm. I was taking mu greater than mu not. No. Sir, actually, told we can calculate. So I thought that let me try. Yeah. Oh. See, That's... you can try, but uh, it forms a. It it will not form. It will give you some series of uh, probabilities. Actually, you should integrate. Okay. That that that's none. As of now, we don't need that. It's not that okay. complex. So you start from u naught and you go till uh, whatever possible values are there. and hmm. you integrate you multiply some some density again some 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 stuff some extended stuff we we oh so, better not means, to go there okay so if we get means if we need to calculate the power then alternative will always be given right always be simple 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 alternative correct okay so that's t yes, test now these are the only two tests we have for testing mean now we will do uh, a testing on variance also so that that's also a parameter and sometimes we do test for variance also when that is the case we cannot use z test as well as t test both are for testing for mean so then a new test comes into the picture which is called chi square test so what is this chi square test and when can i use this chi square test is the first and primary questions we will have so the first thing is chi square test you can use when you are testing for variance so when you are testing for variance 
we are going to use skyscraper. And the next thing is the test statistic in your uh, uh, situation or whatever uh, place you are. You are in problem in front. You have a problem in front of you. In that particular problem, the test statistic you should choose in such a way as I explained previously. Also, the test statistics which statistic which you are going to choose for a sufficiently large n, the test statistic should more or less should start behaving like your parameter. So here our parameter is sigma square or sigma. So whatever sigma is the parameter for us. So whatever the test statistic I am going to choose t. So this is a function of the samples, but that function in the long run, or if I take more samples, this function should actually converge to the parameter. Okay, so that's how we choose the test statistic. So here in this case. Previously, also we just saw taking s square as my test statistic. I know the expectation of s square is sigma square. So now this s square more or less is very near to sigma square. So that's why we change. This is the very first place we change our test statistic. Till the previous problems, our test statistic is just the sample mean. But in the sky square test, our test statistic will change to. Sample variance, and that makes sense. If you take uh, sample mean as your test statistic, this will not uh, resemble your variance, whichever whatever you are testing. Right? Always keep that in mind. Test statistic. How do you choose the test statistic? Will always depend on the parameter which you are testing. And give taken a sufficiently large number of samples, your test statistic. Should uh, uh, converge to the parameter. Okay, so so this is this these are the things for using chi square test. We we use chi square test only when we are testing for variance. And this is again this chi square test or the previous test which are uh, whatever we discussed. It's for only one distribution. So we are in one distribution and the samples come from only one distribution. Okay, and we have drawn some samples and samples. We have only those samples now, and we are ready to test for variance. And in in while we test for variance, do you think we require mu to be given, or necessarily not? Anyone? Mu, uh, the distributions mean. What do you think about distribution mean? Do you think it should be given, or you don't need that? So, do we have our variance in this one? No, I already. Didn't mean mean you mind. have only the samples with you. Okay, I have only the samples. Then, without samples, how can means without mean? How can I calculate the variance? Hey, this is population mean. Okay. Sample variance can be just computed with sample mean. Yes. I don't need uh, population mean to compute sample variance. See, it turns mm -hmm. out that for testing variance, I don't actually worry about the mean at all. Yes. So why is this? We are going to see that. But before that, let me write down uh, the situation. We have uh, samples with us, and we are testing for variance. That means, so here, there will be null and alternate for me. So null will be something like sigma is equal to sigma naught, and alternate is something like sigma greater than sigma naught. Okay, and then I have a test statistic with me, and finally, I should also define what, what is my test. So my test will be. So I'm going here to... the alternate can be sigma greater than sigma naught or less than sigma naught. Any uh, any tailed. See, I I I said right. Like most of ninety five percent of the cases, we worry whether our 
sigma is greater than sigma not only see we have some some variance with us and someone claims that uh, it has the less variance and we mm. test that it will not be that less it will be greater greater okay. okay so variance will always be optimized to minimum so we we, we will be testing for variance only if in most of the cases it, i'm not saying for all the cases in most of the cases if variance is if someone says to you that this variance is very low then you will you will you will be like oh no it will not be that low it will be greater than that i guess previously it was greater but we will test it okay uh, but there there might be some cases where sigma uh, alternative could be sigma less than sigma someone so that's because uh, variance being low is a good thing isn't it yes, so that's yes. why I mean. variance being low is a good thing that's what we try for we we try to get the variance to be minimized okay so uh, we have uh, the test we have to define the test we are going to reject h not if if uh, i say s square is greater than c or c square or simply you can do s greater than c whichever you do it's just the constant right side is just the constant okay so s greater than c now i have the test the test statistic samples with me now i am ready to test right now how do i compute alpha in order to compute alpha i have to somehow i don't know the distribution of this s square somehow i have to convert this s square in such a way uh, or in a in a very known distribution right s square i cannot bring it to standard normal because standard normal is from minus infinite to plus infinite and we all know that s square is just a positive quantity so it cannot be fit into standard normal right agreed uh, so standard normal doesn't work t test uh, t distribution doesn't work i cannot fit uh, i cannot convert it into t distribution also so the only thing i can think of is is there any other distribution that that can be closely related to s square and it turns out that there is another distribution which is called chi square distribution and chi square distribution if s square is my sample variance then n minus 1 divided by sigma square into s square follows chi square and minus one. so this is chi square distribution again with n minus 1 degrees of freedom okay again here also this chi square distribution actually depends on the number of samples we take okay so now we are going to use this okay. so we have uh, in order to compute alpha we so have before yes. starting hmm. can you just to measure what are the properties of the chi square because sir explained it but i didn't get it quite right uh what do you mean properties of chi square, square distribution has some properties right uh, sir explained it some means in some sense but i didn't get that like it is not symmetric around one and everything like that ha huh. see that's what i said no normal t distributions are symmetric graphs hmm and the sample variance which we have is not symmetric as well as it will not go below zero so whatever uh, the properties you can think of sample variance all the properties will hold for chi square also okay, okay. what 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 can you think about uh, the sample variance can it be negative no it can't be negative uh can it be uh too large too large no we don't want we want to minimize that uh, uh it's not minimize 
सो यूजली यू विल हैव सम सॉर्ट ऑफ दिस बिहेवियर फॉर गाइस ओके सो इट विल नॉट बी सिमेट्रिक इट विल बी सम व्हाट राइट टेल राइट स्क्यूड और लेफ्ट स्क्यूड दिस इज राइट स्क्यूड एक्चुअली yeah and also this depends on the n so as n and as n increases this will change so if if there is time i will go to that stat this dot com and we can analyze how the distributions of this chi square and okay chi distributions okay hmm okay we will we'll go there but as of now believe me that this n minus 1 divided by sigma square times s square follows chi square distribution Okay, now what do we have? Alpha is reject H naught. When do I reject H naught? When S is greater than C. Given. Uh, null is true. So null is true is S greater than C. Null is true is sigma is equal to sigma naught. And this thing. Now I have to convert this to somehow in this fashion. So what should I do? I have to square it, multiply n minus one divided by sigma. Sigma square. What will I get? N minus one s square by sigma square greater than n minus one c c square sigma square. Now sigma is equal to sigma naught. We are in that space. So that will be n minus one s square divided by sigma naught square greater than n minus one c square sigma. So now this, okay, this itself uh, follows chi square and minus one. So what I will write is this is chi square and minus one greater than and minus one c square sigma naught square. And from here I can write one minus f chi square and minus one. Within inside it, there will be n minus one c square by sigma naught square. Okay, this is what alpha is. Okay, so that is alpha. That's how I will compute alpha for chi square distribution. And then we, once you get the alpha, compare it with the p value, and you can do reject or accept. Or sometimes alpha is given. Just like previous example we did, alpha will be given, and some 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 value will be given. Test statistic value will be given to you. You compute c and then compare test statistic value, and uh, that means s square will be given to you. You compare that with c square and find uh, and conclude something. So let's do a problem. Uh, I will do uh, twelve point five itself. I will do maybe this one, four and five. Okay, four and five actually asks for uh, what conclusion we can make, and fifth question is for p-value. We will do both. Okay, suppose x is normally distributed with unknown standard deviation. So x is it is normally distributed with mu and sigma square. Both are unknown. For n is equals to 50 IID samples of x, so x1 to x50 follows IID x. Next is the sa sample standard deviation is given to be 6.2. So that means we were given the small s. So I'm I'm writing small s because I will use capital S for my test statistic. So this is given to us as six point two. Okay, and the null assume the null to be sigma is equal to seven, and alternative to be sigma less than seven. You see, in this case, we have given sigma less than seven. So this is sigma is equal to seven, and in alternative, sigma less than seven. Now, what conclusion would a chi-square test reach at a significance level? Of alpha is equal to zero point zero five. It says, "Task for what conclusion? 
we make at the rate alpha is equal to 0 0.05 okay so yeah so what else uh, we have to write we have to write uh, the test test yes. statistic and the test so we'll write it down so test is we are going to reject h not h not if <coughs> if s less than c if s is less than c so if you are confused with how to write down the test so whatever the sign the alternative has you maintain the same sign for your test okay that's what my test is now i can write down the alpha alpha is probability that s less than c because this is where the rejection region lies rejection region given alternative is true alternative is sigma is 7 so now what i have to do i have to do n minus 1 s square divided by sigma square sigma square less than n minus 1 c square divided by sigma square given sigma is equal to 7 so i know this is chi square chi square and minus 1. So I can simply write, I know the left hand side also 0 0.05 and this is chi square n it is given to be 50. So 50 minus 1 is 49 less than, so this is 50 minus 49 into c square divided by 7 square. So this and this will get cancels out and this will be f, z, f chi square 49 of simply c square that's this is equal to 0 0.05 okay uh, now what else we have to do we have to take down take the hint so hint is given to us as hint is f inverse chi square 49 of 0 0.05 is given to be 33.93 0.93 so we'll use that here this is 33.93 is equals to c square so we'll just take the inverse and the left hand side will become 33.93 so now now i have c square with me so either you do square root of this and take the c value or you just compare it with that s square So this is 33.93 and s is known to us it is where is it is given to be 6.2 so if i square 6.2 what will i get this is 6.2 square 38.44 ah, okay at least you you are that guarantee that it is greater than 36 at least at least we need only the sign <laughs> right uh, what what sign will it be will it be greater than or less than or equal to or? greater than greater than so greater than so we so got uh, we got s square greater than c square which more or less s greater than c but when do i reject i reject if s is less than c mm -hmm. but here i got s greater than c okay mm -hmm. So, so that means we are going to accept H. Okay, that is the conclusion we will draw. So this is fourth question. And fifth question, uh, it asks for uh, find P value. So P value is some special case of alpha, that's it, alpha star. Let me say it as alpha. Star. So P value which is alpha star, uh, what is that special case is, in place of C, I'll just replace the smallest. So probability that I'm going to reject, or maybe I'll write alpha as of now. So alpha we have is probability that S is less than C given sigma is equal to 7. So for P value, this will be a special case where that special case is in place of C, I'll just replace small s. So for different values of C, I will get different alphas. 
for a special value small s which is the given test statistic value if i replace it now that particular special case alpha is called as p value this is sigma is equal to 7 and from here this is p s less than this value we know it is 6.2 this is equal to 7. Now we have to find this alpha star. Yes, just a second. Any any doubt in this? Yes, sir. Actually, I just wanted to understand why we replace the C. Means you told something, but I didn't understood. The C, you are replacing it with a special value of alpha S, right? It's not special value of alpha. It's special value of C itself. Okay. So... Okay, C and S. So, on the test statistic uh, line, S mm -hmm. can float anywhere. C also can yeah. float anywhere. But I have uh, S, right, already given to me, 6.2. Yes. So, this is the test statistic value. But my S mm -hmm. can take any value. It's just the sample variance, right? Where if mm -hmm. I change the sample, I'll get different sample. Yes. And there will be some critical value C. Uh, that C can be here. If, if it is here, you will get some alpha. If it is hmm. here, you will get some other alpha. If yes. it is here, you will get some other alpha. If it is here, then that alpha is called as P value. Okay. If that C is same as S, then hmm. alpha is called as P value. Okay. okay. That's it. Okay, now I have to do some 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 uh, manipulations. Sigma square less than six point two square into n minus one divided by sigma square. Given sigma is equal to seven. So again, in this case also, it will be like this is chi square probability one. This chi square forty nine less than 6.2 whole square. Right? Because this will be 49 and this and this will get cancelled out. There you will be left with 6.2 whole square and this will be F chi square 49 and this is 38 point something or something or you use the hint uh, 38.44 and this is what the p value alpha star. So again hint is given to you it is given to you as 0.13. So this is 0.13. So p value will also be 0 0.13. Okay. So this is a test where we use for testing variance. Okay. Chi square test is used for variance testing. Okay. So and problems related to chi square test, this is how we solve. And let's move to next kind of test or next kind of situations where you might face in the real life what happens is you will be given two distributions now then you you are asked to compare the means of the two distributions or sometimes they might ask you the same question on variance also compare the variances of these two so now in this case this is these are the tests the next test which you, you are going to see are the tests which are useful when you have to do compare means of two different distributions and compare sample variances of two different distributions. So the first test is called two sample Z test. Two sample Z test. When I said Z, you should always mean. Uh, uh, to two things should always run in your mind. One is you are testing for, uh, you are comparing the means. And the next thing is your variance is known. Mm -hmm. So population variance or the distribution variance. Variance is known. Then only we can use Z-test. Okay. Known variance. So what is this two sample test is we will be given some samples or it, it will we will be given you just the distribution to two data different data 
and you will draw some samples so x1 to xn1 and this this comes from some u1 sigma 1 square let's assume you know this sigma 1 square is known to us but not the mu1 similarly you draw samples from the other distribution also which follows maybe mu2 sigma2 square here also this is known sigma2 square is known and now we are interested to compare mu1 and mu2 so that means uh, we are interested to test whether the means are equal or not so we are testing with the alter uh, with the null as mu1 is equals to mu2 with the alternative against against the alternative mu1 not equals to mu2 okay so this is what we are going to do uh, for this again we need to have the test statistic defined and as well as test to be defined again always remember test statistic should always resemble Sorry. your uh, resemble your parameter so here if i if i i can write this like this or i can write this as mu1 minus mu2 is equals to 0 and this i can write it as mu1 minus mu2 is not equals to 0 so now here your parameter is mu1 minus mu2 so whatever the test statistics statistic you are going to choose this test statistic You are going to choose this. This should resemble mu one minus mu two somehow as the expectation or something in the long run or the more samples I take from the both distributions. This should resemble. So the best test statistic I can take is x bar minus y bar because uh, you see this expectation of x bar minus y bar is will lead to mu one minus mu two. So expectation of x bar is mu one, and expectation of y bar is mu two. So it will be like mu or minus mu. So this this makes sense. So taking test statistic like this makes sense. Okay. And yeah, we have the test statistic now. Some some people might write y bar minus x bar. It doesn't make any difference. That much difference. You can take whatever in whichever way you want. Now I have to define the test. Right. Now how do I define? I define. I am going to reject H naught if my test statistic and also okay maybe i will write test statistic greater than something so if i write like this what happens is it doesn't capture yeah, so i am interested in the difference between the sample means so model is right so difference between the sample means uh, i should all i should consider both things like either x bar greater than y bar or y bar greater than x bar both the both the things i should consider so if x bar is greater than y bar, then also I will have some difference. If y bar is greater than x bar, then also I will have difference. But in negative way, if I don't take uh, uh, t modulus here, that will give me some negative value. And I don't want that negative thing to appear. I am just inter uh, interested in the absolute difference. That's it. So we only worry about the modulus of t. So whether there is difference or not, that's it. Is it negative difference or positive difference? We are not worried about that. So if there is a difference, I will reject. I will reject the null. If there is no significant difference, then I am going to accept. So this is the same like uh, the case of Z test, which we have done. Mm -hmm. Two tail. Right. OK. So yeah, now, now we have all the recipes available so we have to cook up so what do we do what should we do is we are interested to compute again see in order to conclude whether you are going to reject h node or accept h node you are always we always go for finding the probability of type 1 error which is the significance level so the significance level alpha is probability that mod t is greater than c which is the rejection region 
given the null list. Now, uh, now the next question is okay. We we reached here, but we don't know the distribution of this. Actually, tested. We are taking modulus of t, right? So it's modulus of t means it's like modulus of x bar minus y bar. So how do I convert this x bar minus y bar modulus of x bar minus y bar? Somehow I should convert to the standard normal. So that is why I, I I can use the z distribution, and that is why this is called z test, z test. Okay. Uh, so what what should I do? That's our first question. So we have this. Okay. Somehow I should do a magic and convert this to standard normal zero one. So we don't know what path. This is the path, random path. So what should we do? Uh, before doing that, we will understand what is this actually. Okay. So what does this follow basically? So x bar minus y bar we have with us. Okay. Let's consider x bar minus y bar. So what what will be the? So in order to understand the distribution, uh, we need uh, primary things, two things. Understand the mean, understand the variance. If you can able to understand the mean and variance, then there is a chance that I can actually convert that to standard normal. Just what I have to do, I have to subtract the expected value of this random variable divided by square root of variance. That I mean. So let us understand both the things. What is expectation of x bar minus y bar? So this will be expectation of x bar minus expectation of y bar. So what what will this where will this go? Any guesses? Mu x mu y. Mu of x. Uh, what is mu of x? So this we is have two decimals, right? So yeah. So mu one. This is x, mm -hmm. and this is x follows this, and y follows this. Uh, what is then mu one. mu one, one and mu two minus mu two. mu one minus mu two? Okay, so we got expectation of x bar minus y bar is mu one minus mu two. Uh, now, what is the variance of x bar minus y bar? Can I write variance of, variance x, of bar x bar plus variance of y bar? Variance of y bar. So I can write this only if x bar and y bar are independent to each other, right? So there is a uh, there is this condition required. So let let's say that x y are independent. Okay, if we have this, let's assume this also for the sake of simplicity. So if we assume, we can write it like this. Uh, now, what is the variance of x bar? Is it this? Yes, sir. So yes. I have n one samples with uh, the uh, x distribution having standard deviation sigma one. Plus, what is this? Variance of y bar. See, you can you can sigma two square uh, by. So x follows mu one. Sigma one square, y follows mu two sigma two square, and x has drawn n one samples, y has drawn n two samples. So variance of x bar will be sigma one square by n one. Variance of y bar will be sigma two square by n n two. Okay. So now I have mu, which is mu one minus mu two, and the sigma square. Which is sigma one, sigma one square by uh, n one plus sigma two square by n two something like this. Now I know somehow x bar minus y bar. You see each of the sample follows normal distribution. With this I can write it as x one to x n one divided by n one minus 
y1 plus yn2 divided by n2. Now you observe, see this is just the linear combination of normal samples. This we studied, right? Did we study this? Linear combination of normal samples is lean. Uh, sorry, linear combination of a normal uh, samples is follows it's normal. normal. Yes, it's not. It follows normal. So this is minus one and two y y minus one by n two y two and so on minus one by n two y n two. Okay, you see this x one, x two, x n one, y one, y two, y n two all follows normal. So all mm. x i's and y i's follow normal. And this is just the linear combination. Linear combination is some constant multiplied to that x one, some constant multiplied to x two. So like this, some constant multiplied to y one. This is the linear combination. So what I can say is from this linear combination of normal. Distribution follows normal distribution. So from this, I can imply that x bar minus y bar will follow normal distribution. And also, I had computed the mu, mu mean and the variance. Mean with mean mu one minus mu two, and with variance sigma one square by n one plus sigma two square by n. Okay. So now we got it. So now we got. X bar minus y bar follows this. Now, in order to convert this to standard normal, what should I do? X bar minus y bar minus mu one minus mu two divided by square root of sigma one square by n one plus sigma two square by n two. So, if I do this, can I say this? Is it true? Whatever I written. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is standard normal. Yes, sir. It is standard normal. Right. Good. Now, I got, I got this. So, I, I, where we started? What's our problem? Our problem is, we have something like modulo x bar minus y bar. And I should figure out something and convert it into standard normal zero one. Standard normal zero one, and I got it. I got this. Okay. Now we are going to use that. So what I have to do is here I have modulo. Okay, let's write down alpha again. Alpha is probability that modulo x bar minus y bar. Uh, greater than c, right? Yeah, greater than c. Given null is true. So this is alpha I have. So that's what we have written. Mod t. Uh, in place of t, I have written x bar minus y bar. Both are same. So what is this? H naught is true. H naught is true means mu one. Mu one minus is mu two. Ah, uh, mu one minus mu two is. One minus mu two is true. Okay. Or mu one is equal to mu two. Ah, uh, uh, whatever. So you see now. So what I have to do? This term, when null is true, which you are seeing this, this, this mu one minus mu two, becomes this zero. term vanishes off and becomes zero. And simply, what happens is this. This happens. So I can simply write x bar minus y bar modulo divided by square root of Sigma one square by n one plus sigma two square by n two greater than c minus zero. I don't know to do that minus zero. C by root sigma one square by n one plus sigma two square by n two. Okay. So so why I removed my mu one minus mu two because we are in the world of null true. So it is given that null true. So if null is true, mu one is equals to mu two, and this term will go to zero. Now, what are we left with? This is mod set. So alpha, we got it as p mod z. 
greater than c divided by so let me let me not write everything let me just say sigma square is sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 so this will become sigma simply sigma okay so now uh, i have to open the brackets if i open this will become probability that either z should be greater than c by sigma or this particular z should be less than minus c by c this is what on and again you can simplify this further so this is 1 minus probability uh, yeah 1 minus probability that z greater z less than c by sigma and also you can write this so understand this how i am writing again i'll just draw this 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 is c by minus c by sigma and let's say this is c by sigma so this f z of c by sigma is equals to this the green region this green is actually equals to 1 minus of this part that's what that's what we ha i have written it here so 1 minus of fz less than c by sigma is actually probability that z greater than c by sigma but i don't want that i i am just comparing this with this so what I mean is probability that z greater than c by sigma is actually equals to probability that z less than minus c by sigma. Okay. So what I mean is this probability and this probability is the same. So you can see from the graph it will be symmetric. So in place of writing, so this thing I have written it like this. So I can write the same thing again for this also. I can write 1 minus p z less than c by sigma for this also because these two are equal. The red regions are equal. If red regions are equal, this is equal to this. And both the terms can be written like this. 1 minus p. Sir, can you explain it again because I'm, I'm not getting... Yes. See, the, the red regions are same, probability yes. areas. So what are those red regions represent? One is Check. this probability and one is this probability. Yes. Huh. So that means this is equals to this. Okay, so both are actually the same thing. Same thing. I can instead of writing this, okay, I will write one more step for you. Instead of writing this. Let me write it here only. So instead of writing these two separately, I can write two times of probability that z greater than c by c. Hmm. That's it. So once I can write this, I can write this as 1 minus probability that z less than c by sigma, and this is multiplied by 2. You don't need okay. to write this also. Okay. No, I understood that way also now that hmm. both are same. So yeah, uh, so either you can write it like this or instead of taking z greater than c by sigma as these two are equal i can write it two times of like this z less than minus c by sigma minus c by sigma okay. and this will be directly fz of minus c by sigma and this will be 2 minus 2 times fz of c by sigma okay so that's the difference. So this is how we compute the alpha. And again, in real life problems, uh, you will see alpha is given to you. And you have to conclude 
for that particular alpha whether you are going to reject or accept okay so this is for uh, mu let me also discuss so as the time is running out let me also discuss for variance and then we will if there is time we will do problems or we will be having one more session for uh, week 12 anyway we can continue problems there let me complete the theory part so that's for where uh, that's for mean and as i discussed previously we also test for variance for two samples two different samples so there are two different samples and two different distributions and we have down to n1 samples from the first distribution and n2 samples from the second distribution okay now we are interested to uh, compare variances that means whether the variances are equal or not so it's not uh, now my null will be sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 or my alternative will be sigma 1 not equals to sigma 2. Okay. So this is the null. Yeah. Now comes the important question. So once I have null and alternative with me, how should I choose my test statistic? Sample variance. Sample variance. So I can write this as two different ways. Uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to 0. So let's suppose say previously we did the same thing. Here also we do the same thing. This also sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is not equal to 0. If I do like this, what should I take? Test statistic will be somewhat as x square minus s one square, right? Yes, no. Yes, sir. If it is that, again, I have to. I don't know the distribution of this. Again, I should uh, somehow. And again, this cannot go to somehow I can't go to normal. I have to go to some other distribution, which is also not known as of now. Okay. And this is not known. And this distribution is not known. And also, if you see, you can compute the expectation or the mean for this. But computing variance or understanding this distribution understanding the distribution of sx square minus s square square is complicated because variance of sx square minus s y square is where we get lost of it like it's it's more or less, we don't have uh, any theorems or anything to compute those. Right? So, what we do is we reach the dead end here. And we stop here. So, what, what can we do? So, we can't stop, right? We should, we should test it somehow. So, one possible way is instead of taking the difference if i look at the fraction instead of writing like this i can also write like this sigma 1 by sigma 2 is equals to 1 or sigma 1 by sigma 2 is not equals to 1 so i can write like this so if i write like this so this this, this is not working for me if I write like this, now the good uh, test statistic would be Sx square by Sy square or Sx by X, uh, Sx by Sy. Anything. So you can consider the sample variance, uh, ratio of the sample variances. That will more or less give me the ratio of the population variances. Okay, so this is 
okay this is also this, this can be a good metric let's see again we will reach the same point where previously we are so here we are at sx square by sy square and again we don't know the distribution of this so i should somehow go and convert to the well known distribution so how should we do this is luckily we have one distribution that actually uh, uh, that actually this sx square by sy square follows and this comes from chi square distributions so we know that this n1 in s1 sx square divided by sigma x square follows this chi square n minus 1 right we know this right we know that chi square distribution so if you have if i have my sample variance with me i know that 10 minus 1 times sample variance divided by population variance will follow chi square distribution using that we will try to see is there any distribution uh, that follows if i divide two chi square distributions and the answer for it is yes so i have a distribution chi square and some distribution divided by chi square and 2 minus 1 this will actually follows an f distribution so this is where we are going to see a new distribution f distribution with now you see we have n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 two different samples from two different distributions so both will be my factors now so this f distribution will depend on both n1 minus 1 as well as n2 minus 1 okay so let's see uh, let, let, let us write down what is this so this is n minus 1 so n1 minus 1 sx square by sigma x square here we took it as sigma 1 square right so you just go above and see uh, for x distribution x we have the variance to the sigma 1 divided by n2 minus 1 Okay. sy square hmm. sy square by divided sigma by two sigma 2 square uh just a second we are losing something here okay so this is this the this the so ratio won't satisfy aha uh -huh. just not just the ratios of chi square also mm -hmm. this thing so this this divided by n1 minus 1 you should divide it by degrees of freedom so this will follow f distribution just not the ratios of the chi square distributions it's the chi square distribution divided by number of degrees of freedom then whole divided by uh the chi square distribution of the second uh, uh distribution divided by n2 so, so this will follow f distribution and from there we get this divided by n1 minus 1 and this divided by n2 minus 1 this will cancel out this this the number of samples will not come into the picture this will follow f distribution and if i further simplify this i am going to get something like sx square sigma 2 square divided by sy square sigma 1 square this will follow f and 1 minus 1 and 2 minus 1 okay so yeah so now uh, we have this as a test statistic sx square by sy square with us as the test statistic for me so i know somehow if i do the sigma 2 square by sigma 1 square i will i will be getting i can convert it into f distribution right so 
yeah now we have test statistic let's define our test and we will proceed for so test this you are going to reject uh, what we are going to do reject null if my test statistic is greater than zero. right that, that's what we are going to do and we are going to define so we, we, we will see just just taking it as greater than c is sufficient or not okay, usually we did it, what we did is we just did that e greater than c there will be only one critical value for any case any test which we saw earlier but right now let, let's proceed taking this and see where we are getting stuck okay so i will start now uh, we will start like alpha is equals to probability i'm going to reject when it is t greater than c given the null is true <coughs> okay so this will be like probability that sx square by sy square greater than c null is true is sigma 1 is equals to sigma 2 so when sigma 1 is equals to sigma 2 you just go back and see this and this will get cancelled out and you don't need uh, anything at all except the ratio of the sample variances that will follow directly the F distribution so yeah so far so good so we went here this itself will follow f distribution and greater than c so this is one minus probability that f n minus 1, n minus 2. Uh, greater than C. Right. So that is there. And then what we do? 1 minus F, F n minus n 1 minus 1. N 2 minus 1. So this, see, this is less than, okay, so like this, we have reached and this is what we concluded alpha. What am I missing here? So am I missing something or whatever we did is correct? So I'll just scroll back and I define. I'm going to reject H0 if T is greater than some C. Am I correct or where am I going wrong? If wrong, where am I going wrong? Anyone? So should we take modulus? Hmm. Yeah, we should take modulus, but why should we take modulus? Because it's again, uh, uh, it is a two-tailed test Correct. for comparing variance. So for variance, we, we our alternative is sigma 1 not equals to sigma 2. That's it. Okay. So, so it you should be positive. Hmm? Variance is only positive, no negative. Yeah, no negative, I agree. But you see, uh, when we compare, uh, it be... that could be less than 1 or greater than 1 also. This ratio or this sigma 1 by sigma 2, the population variance itself. So can you guarantee that sigma 1 by sigma 2, so we are comparing for sigma 1 by sigma 2 is equals to 1 or not? So this is sigma 1 by sigma 2 is equals to 1 against sigma 1 by sigma 2 not equals to 1. So not equals to 1 means either it can be greater than 1 or it can be less than 1. Right? Right? Both, both cases are possible. Except that equal to 1, both the cases are possible. So, so that means I should reject H0 if my test statistic goes far from 1 on the right side 
or goes far from the left side so how do i define that so i should reject t if it is greater than some 1 plus c right so so if, if it is or you can see it like this also the difference between t and 1 should not go beyond something okay. but uh, if you clearly understand the distribution this is not symmetric it's not like z or t taking modulus and it will give us as it is symmetric it will give us probability so, uh, same probabilities something like that this f distribution does not behave like normal distribution so that's why you think of it like this so we anticipate this is one here and we expect our test statistic to lie very closer to one either on the left side or the right side okay there is some threshold on both the sides as this is one this could be uh, so threshold length can be the right side it is allowed to go cr and on the left side it is allowed to go cl because as i said it is not symmetric so you will have different uh, lengths on left side and the right side different probabilities basically okay so this will be your acceptance region so this is where you accept ah yeah uh, sx square by sy square if it lies near to this you say it is very close to one the ratio is close to one and you accept the null that uh, their variances are equal but if it goes above this or below this it will be rejected and you can also see uh, that it is the ratio between the variances it will not so go reject, below huh? please reject your right side Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. so this is reject and uh, there will be a minimum value for this also it will be c so the left side rejection region will be a closed interval okay so from zero to here so this here is you can easily see that if it can be allowed to go cl length so this will be 1 minus cl this will be 1 plus cr now you can see from this uh, graph itself i am going to reject where all the cases i am going to reject this is how my test is so i am going to reject my null if my test statistic is less than 1 minus cl or if it is greater than 1 plus cr So either of the cases I am going to reject. The only case I am going to accept. So if you write accept case, it will be very clear to you. I am going to accept H0 if this T lies in between this 1 minus CL and 1 plus CR. I will only accept some uh, length to the right side of 1 and some length to the left side of 1. Why we write it? Because if you see the distribution, let me give you this. So I'm, I'm just drawing the PDF of F distribution. So it will be like this. So it will be like this. And this one will be here so this is one and you see area under the curve is more on the left side than the right side so that means if i have to make equal probabilities on both the sides i have to move very little on the left side and very far on the right side so that's why my critical values If I move to here, if 
and I have to move some water here. Okay, so moving itself, moving means this is my acceptance region, and this will be my rejection region, and alpha is this, this, and area under this curve after. Okay, so what do we want to have is both sides, my probability of going error to be equal. So I'll try to keep it equal. So I'll try to keep this as alpha by two and this as alpha by two. That's why the left side uh, acceptance region and the right side acceptance region are different. So left side acceptance region can be of length CL and the right side of the acceptance region can be of length CR. So that's where this C is split into two different uh, values, left side and right side. One is one minus CL, one is one plus CR. Okay. So we have uh, defined our test like this. We also have the distribution with us. We are only left to find the alpha. Now how to compute alpha? How do we compute? So now I know uh, that alpha. So what do I know? This this I know. S x square by S y square into sigma one sigma two square by sigma one square will follow f n one minus one and two minus one. Okay. So using that, I will get S x square by S y square. So now I have two regions. Right? Either this region, this ratio greater than 1 plus CR, I'm going to reject. I'm going to reject given sigma 2 is equal, sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 plus uh, this Sx square by Sy square. This ratio is less than 1 minus CL given sigma 1 is Okay, and also as I said, this rejection region and this rejection region probabilities, uh, we will keep it equal because I don't want one side having more error and one side having less error. I want uh, the error should be equally present on either sides. So if I'm making an error, that shouldn't affect my choosing the side, which side. Okay, so that that's why this will be alpha by 2, this will be alpha by 2. Therefore, alpha by 2 is equals to probability. And you can see I, this is t. And also, if uh, we are in the space of sigma 1 is equals to sigma 2, that itself follows f distribution. So we are very much close to our solution. So this itself follows f distribution. Greater than 1 plus cr. Uh, and this is uh, also equal to probability that this f n1 minus 1 and 2 minus 1 less than 1 minus c. So this I can write as 1 minus f f of n1 minus 1 and 2 minus 1 of 1 plus cr. And this is equals to f of n1 minus 1 and 2 minus 1, 1 minus c. Okay, because there is less than, I can directly write uh, it as the CDF. If it is greater, 1 minus of that will be the CDF. So this will be equals to alpha by 2. So now we are done. So depending upon the alpha, so if CL or CR is given to you, you can compute alpha. Or alpha is given to you, you can compute CR or CL. Okay. So that's uh, the F distribution for you. So if you observe clearly, whatever the test we are naming, so that particular distribution we are going to use while we solve the problem. So that's why the tests are named like that. Z test, T test, chi square test, F test. So in, in each and every test, we are going to use Z test uses the Z table. T test uses the T table. Chi square uses the chi square table. 
chi square test uses the chi square distribution and it's stable f test uh, uses the f distribution and it's corresponding f table the names uh, came from there okay uh, with that i think i'm done for today and um, i didn't do problems on this f test and uh, chi square test maybe in the next uh, solid test session uh, we will do some problems on this and one more thing uh, in regards to week 12 for end term exam so you don't worry much about uh, uh, the problem solving and all so maybe i can tell you straight away uh, the weightage is very very less for week 12 so if you know how to do all this stuff without uh, the actual computation part so you should understand where you should use which test so that's the main intention for this week 12 we do know that you don't have enough time uh, to go through week 12 contents because next week is the exam so that's why weightage of week 12 will be very very less uh, we will more foc our more focus will be on the parameter estimation and week 11 okay and also you will get questions from week 1 to 8 okay mm. okay uh with that uh, let me end the session for today so i may not be extending this session uh, further because of uh, okay i can't right now i am very very exhausted <laughs> yeah any particular topic you want us to focus in the first eight weeks right. first eight weeks huh? uh -huh. uh, that we will discuss in okay, the okay, session okay. or maybe i will give you uh, see we uh, have more focus uh, should be on uh what what do you think let me ask <laughs> what, what do you think that an instructor thinks <laughs> i don't like uh, the There was a quiz too, and th that portion, like I think that was like week five and week six was like uh, I don't know if there will be weightage will go there again or like we can like it will be like in general like we studied conditional probabilities and join. Okay. Uh, no, uh, maybe you are still thinking in terms of student point of view. Think it of a an instructor point of view, teacher point of view. So how do you expect? the teacher where where do the teacher uh, test you depends okay, on the most like important topics if right we, if you are trying to be uh, okay let, let, let's Seven, break the, let break the eyes and let, so let like me tell you what kind of questions like ah, yeah, yeah, function uh, functions of continuous random variables ha ah, correct see chebyshev's inequality that will not leave you okay Even though you leave uh, Chebyshev's inequality, Chebyshev's inequality will run behind you. CLT. Ah, uh, CLT. See, this Chebyshev's inequality is uh, is connected to most of the real practical examples in ML. They use this Chebyshev's inequality to bound the errors. So this is this is very very important thing which you should know. Okay. So Chebyshev uh, generates the weak law of large numbers using weak law of large numbers. Uh, in real lives you don't have the access to complete data even though you have the access to complete data you can't test on the complete data you can only draw some samples and given a samples you can only predict how the data is that that's what you have to do and while predicting that you will encounter error and you have to bound your error and this is a serious issue right if you if you, if you do some predictions and if your error is somewhat very vague your manager will definitely give you a resignation letter next day so uh, the person who shows the results with less errors is a better uh, model right so so we do minimize our errors and for minimizing errors we do bound our errors and for bounding we only have one metric not one metric we only have easiest one is chebyshev's law we also have chernoffs and all uh, where the rate of uh bounding will be different but uh, yeah this all will come it will not leave you it will definitely haunt you even though you cross stats too it will come in machine learning it will come in mlt 
even though you cross all these things it will when you go into jobs it will definitely kill you there okay so chebyshev's weak law of large numbers functions of uh, continuous random variables and its expectation basic concepts we will okay. need like in future and like like the main concept that we are studying uh-huh. clt and weak law large numbers uh-huh. and- okay uh, yeah yeah maybe i can also tell you this i guess see there are few things right poison uh, with the given see poison given uh, something will convert to binomial so there are some special cases right we will not be focusing on those things see okay. they are just small small topics interesting things you will you, you will understand that so when you see it later yeah uh, you will just recall that yeah you have you know that that's it So we'll not be using that uh, anywhere in future. So we will not be testing on those uh, topics. So the most important topics. Figure out the most important topics. From the, there only you can expect. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, with that, uh, we will end the session today, and yeah, we will meet in the next. Week. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so sir, much. Sir, the, the sir. questions uh, which we mentioned initially at the beginning of the class, uh, uh, the P A uh, question, uh, P A uh, week eleven, six yes. and ten, mm-hmm. I had mm-hmm. posted in the chat box. Mm-hmm. Question number six and question number ten. Yes. So, uh, do I have to explain that? Let no, me just wanted to know how do they uh, in which uh, why do they choose binomial where do they choose binomial and where why, where do they choose just the sample mean and you know okay just a second so the same it. type of questions in graded also means where you need to choose that okay uh where is that uh, pa question number 6 sir six, yeah question number 6 For that question, I guess I took like uh, Bernoulli, but I later changed to binomial. I don't know why. Maybe I'm not sure. But later I found out that we need to work on Bernoulli. Six. Six years hmm. past experience indicates that the time required. Is that what? Uh, yes, sir. No, no. Suppose a manufacturer of memory chips. Practice assignment eleven. Oh, eleven. Okay, okay. Yeah, page eleven. Sixth one. Fifth, sixth one. Yes. Okay, okay. Sixth one. Suppose a manufacturer of memory chips observes the probability of chip failure. It's point zero five. Hmm. So in yeah. this also we are testing two hundred. Uh, samples okay so why why can't we uh, the test statistic is uh, here we have taken it as uh, uh, binomial 200 comma p mm-hmm. okay suppose the manufacturer of uh, memory chips observed that the probability of chip failure is 0.05 a new processor is introduced to improve the design of the chips and lower the probability of chip failure okay uh, to test this processor 200 chips are produced using this new processor and tested okay we mm-hmm. would accept the new processor if the total number of failed chips is less than 5 out of 200 so this i understood sir this is uh, we are taking binomial Mm-hmm. whereas uh, there is it's not 10th question it is the 12th question wherein it says the researcher has recently come to contact with number of left handed artists mm-hmm. and wonders whether artists are more likely to be left handed mm-hmm. that uh, they have sele- selecting a sample of 150 mm-hmm. and in the solution part uh, if you see they are not considering uh, they are uh, taking the test statistic as x bar and uh, they are finding uh, bernoulli uh, p and variance uh, bernoulli mm-hmm. variance by mm-hmm. n Okay. So why is it so? Uh, why can't they take as binomial? I didn't get it. Why is it so? Because uh, okay. this is we are considering our parameter here as sample proportion. Okay. Okay. 
there we considered the probability of one sample being defective hmm so our parameter previously is the probability hmm here our parameter is the sample proportion which proportion. is x1 to xn divided by n so that's itself a parameter here okay it is my screen okay. screen still shared yes yes, yes sir it's shared uh, okay uh, so previously what it said is probability of a product failure let me write product okay i just don't want to go back and see what probability of product fail you is 0.05 that's what they gave right pp yes sir yeah P. yeah yeah so this is probability of the product failure for one one product right okay so these are we have taken x1 to x200 samples coming from iid some x where that x follows x has some so x being not failure with probability 0.95 and with the failure it has 0.05 okay okay so look uh, look here this is the p this is the p so we yeah. are interested in this p whether this got reduced or not hmm. right now null is p which is equal to 0.05 and alternative will be p uh, what did they say uh, Say something. Except, uh, from, we from, accept the new if the total number of chips failed is less than five out of two hundred. No, no, our our suspicion. Uh, our lower the probability of chip failure less than. Uh, lower the probability. So yeah. we wanted to improve a design. So that P is less than. P is less than. The new processor is introduced to improve the design of the chip and lower the probability of chip failure. Because it's chip failure. Ah, yeah. So it's. Can we use lower value? Right. Ah. Ah. So here, what P is? P is just the probability of one yeah. sample. Yeah. Okay. And what we are considering? We are considering the sum. right that's what they said total number of chips uh, chips the total number of chip failures is nothing but if i say chip failure let me define it like this this would be better way to define so the total number will give me the number of chips that got failed so this is my random variable s now yes and i know this for s follows binomial 200 comma p, p. Uh, now I know this follows a uh, 200 comma p, and I do next testing. Define my test statistic, and define the test, and do the testing. Okay, so that's why here it is binomial. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the next case, the two. That is question twelve. Hmm. Question twelve. They said left and right hand are. Okay. They took uh, sample proportion. sample proportion so it's like a researcher has recently come into contact with a number of left hand runner see he selects a random sample of 150 members of artists and asks the sample proportion who are left is 0.15 okay so what what is sample proportion out of the 150 uh, uh, people let's say x1 to x150 divided by 150 150 yeah is 0.15 okay for for that and we said uh, usually it is this proportion p mm -hmm. is 0.10 because 10% usually it is mm -hmm. 10% yeah and against an alternative uh, what is this uh, he says oh. he says more likely so greater than uh ah. greater, greater than, than 10% so, so greater than uh, A zero point one zero. Ah, uh, now now you see this parameter p is the sample proportion. It's not probability. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and the sample proportion will lie in between zero to one. 
right? This proportion yes. will be either point one or yeah. any value between uh, zero, zero to one. Yeah. Uh, now, what are we interested in? We are interested in. Uh, so it becomes Bernoulli. Ah, uh, it it only be a Bernoulli. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sir. Okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, that's it for today. Uh, um, I'll just take a break. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, sir.